I actually was, and I'm sure I'm the only one you'll talk to that can say this, a ball boy at the U.S. Open in the mid-70s. That's that right. How so about mid-70s, that? mid-70s, that would be at Forest Hills. Forest Hills. Right. The last year. That's, I was a ball girl as well. Were you? I thought that was a great job. It was a great you're job. that close to the players. I wish I'd players. kept all of the uh, gear. All of probably the, worth all a of fortune right now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they give you all the clothes to wear and stuff. The goof, they had the goofiest uh, sneakers at the time with the high rubber that protected you from dragging your foot when you played. And I grew up playing the game. I played in high school. I played in college. So You I played mean, in college as well. So I did. A good I played player. in division three. Uh, and I played doubles, so I wasn't a good player. But I, I actually peaked at 16. Like you, <laughs> sort of. Although you had injuries, I had a uh, lack of ability, and my mind wandered. It's a great uh, game, though. It is a great game. I think it's an underrated game, but it's you have to, you know, you have to find the right people to play with. You have to find the right, you know, these days they have three and three five and four and four five. You got to get in with the right group where the you're right feeling, level. Right, the right level where you're comfortable and you can compete. And uh, but let's talk about um, a U.S. Open coming up. I mean, there are so many questions on tennis, and I've, I've been. At a loss to explain why youth is not being served, especially in America, although your son doing well and, as you said, very proud of him. Um, where are all the young stars? What, what's well, going on? I think it's just more difficult to break into the top 100. That's really the goal is to be top 100 because then you're directly into the four majors. Okay. And that's when you start making the money. And when you think about it, someone like a Roger Federer is 36 years old, Serena Williams 35 years old. The players are playing well into their 30s now. It was, you were 28 before, 29, and they started asking you, when are you going to retire? Yeah. And players were retiring. I mean, it fascinates me. Yeah, it and so they're taking me. care, better care. of. There's so much money in the game. So they're able to travel with a trainer right. who you go to the gym with, and they're right. able to travel with the physio who does the massages and the ultrasounds and get you recovered for the next day so much better. Right. So therefore, they're having longer careers, and there's still this top 100 that make it so there's players from 18 to 35 all still vying for those same spots it's more difficult and it's a more international game it's more global so you look at the top four on the men top five if you put in Stan Wawrinka who was the champion at the U.S. Open last year you got Federer you got Nadal you got Andy Murray you got Novak Djokovic as you have for 10 years that's the point is it's very tough to break into that group because they've been so dominant so you have young Sasha Zverev from Germany he's 20 years old he's right. a future number one in my opinion no doubt he's starting to beat the Federer's he's starting to beat the Novak Djokovic's but we don't have the American the last American male to win a major was Andy Roddick in 2003 at the US Open that's a long time that's 14 unbelievable years for a country time. that has been so spoiled with champions now on the women's side we've had Serena she's won 23 right. Venus has won seven so we're fine on the women's side but you're right Venus Williams and Serena they're gonna have to retire at some point yeah. their father time will eventually win out and we need somebody to fill those shoes yeah it's just fascinating to me because you know growing up at that time and being more into tennis as America was because McEnroe was charismatic, Agassi was charismatic, Jimmy Connors and McEnroe, you took one side or the other. Yes. And hate is important. <laughs> you know, like in sports, hate is important. You know, it, it, I hate LeBron. I hope they lose. I hate the Steelers. I hate the Cowboys. It's important. It, it draws eyes when people are rooting against or for Tiger Woods. People rooted for him. People rooted against them. So you have to have something invested in absolutely. the rivalry. And that's Whether you want someone to win or someone to lose. Exactly. If it's too milk toast, then it doesn't bring viewers. It doesn't bring eyeballs to the table. And yeah, Jimmy it brings Connors, the same ones. It doesn't yeah, Jimmy bring Connors new and, viewers. and John McEnroe certainly got your juices flowing right. one way or the other. Um, but I do think that people love to watch Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal. I think they are incredible athletes. They're incredible gentlemen. The way that they handle themselves on the court, the way that they handle themselves off the court. Um, this is a U.S. Open that I think people should tune into because Father Time, as I said, is going to win at some oh, point. Yeah. And Roger's yeah. 36. You're going to miss these guys. And Rafa's number one in the world again. And at this time last year, <laughs> both of them were dealing with injuries. And right. we thought possibly we'd seen the best tennis right. from Roger, Roger and Rafa. And now they're back fine for that number one ranking. And on the women's side, because Serena's out, she's due – with her first child in a couple of weeks, um, it's wide open. There are actually eight women after this year's U.S. Open that could be number one in the world. Eight. That is an incredible opportunity. Is the motivation in the other countries... Stronger? Greater because our lifestyle and our standard of living is so good now that the effort required to be great, not good, but great, 
a lot of American kids say, I don't know that it's worth it. You well, know? they're a little softer. I agree. I, I just think that you see a lot of these kids coming from smaller countries from um I mean, just look at the seats. Like when you were playing, right? I don't want to interrupt, but when you were playing, and I was ball boy there, and I and I have the old program. The seeds were American. Yes, you know the men, Australian, possibly in some. They seeded sixteen people, right? Not thirty-two. Now they, you know, they had sixteen seeds on the men's and women's side. Eleven were American. Maybe eleven on the women's side were American, and then Australian, maybe an English. Somebody would sneak in. Now it's exactly the opposite. To find an American in the top thirty-two. On yeah, but look seed. at the countries and where they're from. Oh my they're God. from Belarus. Yes. They're from Serbia. We yes. didn't have any Serbian no. tennis players before. So no. when the young Serbians, Novak Djokovic is seven years old and he's starting to see, you know, Andre Agassi making that much money, not only on court, but from Nike off the court. And, and Kornikova did a lot for the Russian Revolution, yeah. basically. Yeah. They, they look at that and they say, I want to do that. You know, I live in a small little apartment here. We don't have you know, a lot of money, and I want to change my life. Right. I mean, I, I really do think that's a huge motivation, and our lifestyle has gotten better, and it's hard work. You want at 16. That's got to fascinate people still. It, I mean, <laughs> that's got to be the number one question for you. How did you ever win at 16? Well, and it's kind of strange for me. It's actually surreal because I have kids that are 21, 19, and right. 16. Right. And so I look at my 16-year-old and look at what I had to contend with as far as playing Martina in the semis and Chris in the finals and – you know, the, the pressure of it all and so many people watching. And it's kind of like an out-of-body experience. That seems like a, another person right now. But I think what I was able to do is not realize what a big deal it was to win a major. I was so young. I was so naive to know this is going to be life-changing for me. And good thing I didn't know. Yeah, probably, right? I mean, uh... Because I wasn't nervous. I was just thinking really about... No. I was not any more. You're always nervous as an right. athlete. I right. mean, you have to be nervous because right. that gives you that adrenaline boost right. and that gives you the focus and the engagement. But I wasn't any more nervous. I wasn't overwhelmed by the situation because I didn't know what a big deal winning a major was. I went out there just thinking, this is Chris Everett. Okay, I beat her a few times already. This is the strategy I need to employ, and that's what I was thinking. So it's really process-oriented instead of outcome-oriented, and that's athletes have to be that way. Yeah, it's just fascinating, though, now. And, you know, I remember Boris Becker at 17 at Wimbledon, and that's why it drives me, I mean, it makes me crazy that I've been saying Murray, Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, for 10 years doing radio, and no name ever comes in. Yeah, I think and Sasha Zverev is Becker, the new name. And I'm thinking Becker, and I'm thinking Tracy Austin, and I'm thinking, I mean, all these young stars that threatened and, and gave life to the game. Juice comes from... You know the new young stars. That's yeah, that's where Sasha's the juice Vera, for games him comes. Sasha I have Vera seen him play. Very exciting, and Dominique Team as well. Right. Um, you know the game is so much more physical now than it was before. So I think seventeen-year-olds, Michael Chang won the French at seventeen. I think he was. What did you so, weigh? What did you weigh when you were sixteen? Uh, I don't know, one hundred and ten, something like that. You're like five five. Yeah. Five five, hundred and ten. 115, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's a different <laughs> game. Think of the physicality. Oh, my I'm, God. I'm standing in the line now, you know, I, or I interview these these young ladies, and they're six feet tall, and they're strong, and they're athletic, and they have their own team with them. So it's, uh, you know, their own entourage taking care of every right. need. It's really incredible what athletes they are. How about the style of play? What, well, I think that's you enjoy changed. It? I love it. I, that's changed because, first, the rackets. Right. I think one thing that's not mentioned enough is the strings. People don't understand that the strings have changed so much so that you can swing as hard as you want still, but the strings allow you to have more control. So you notice the top spin and the rotation the on the ball. Are the tensions uniform, or do players really, They're in terms of how tightly the... A lot of variety. A lot of variety. A lot of variety. And what's different, too, is that someone like a Roger Federer or Serena Williams, they'll string half of their racket with gut, which is a natural... Yeah string and that's kind of what we used before and now with this new poly string which gives them the more spin and more control so it's called a hybrid with a combination of the two and most of the time they string the crosses at one tension and the mains on another tension so it's really become very intricate uh it's every little every little thing they put lead tape on the racket yeah. how much the rackets weigh yeah. and they want each racket to weigh the same so like every sport it's become much more professional more nervous playing or watching your son? <laughs> watching my son. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I didn't think there's any doubt about that. And does he have aspirations, and what are your thoughts? He does. Um, my son is Brandon Holt. 
um, and he plays, he'll be starting on the USC team, University of Southern California. Um, last year he played number one as a freshman, which was beyond our expectations. He's only the third freshman in like the last and four years. And won the Pac-12. Won the Pac-12. And Can't yeah, that was nerve wracking. We were there, my husband and I were there and it was, I, I started crying. I put the blanket over my head because I was, you know, just <laughs> yeah. like overwhelmed with yeah. emotion because yeah. it, it's a team yeah. a, in college, which is so phenomenal because right. tennis is an individual sport. And now you're playing for the team. Right. And he was came down to his match. Play, he's a so freshman and he was playing against a senior who was very successful at number one. It was USC against UCLA. You wow. know, can't get a bigger can't beat, rivalry yeah. in Southern yeah. California. It was a perfect storm, and then when he won, it was just everybody coming out on the court and team teammates, and it was a, a magical moment for Brandon, obviously, and for our family. So yes, I was a nervous wreck. I don't don't move. I don't move because I don't want to don't don't want to disturb no his thoughts. No, yes. and that's it exactly. And let me uh, let me ask you what you're doing for the Open. What, what yeah, your I'm here for be? for Tennis Channel. I'll be doing the right. commentary for two weeks, but I'm also here for Lavazza, who is relaunching the K Cup. Lavazza. Lavazza, which is it, you know the Grand Celestial. Yeah, that's right. And it's Dark Rose. The K Cup, so it's a single nice. serving of tennis, and so a single serving, just like in tennis. There you go. And single serving, no double right. fault. That's right. So they're building their legacy with this relaunch, just like the tennis players are building their relaunch. And so you can get them the Lavazza K Cups at any of your grocery stores nationwide or online at shoplavazza.com. It's beautifully done. Yeah, you're a, a spokesperson. A little Italian experience in the morning. You're a spokesperson. The let's finish with the injury, just because it's hard for anyone. And you went through injuries, and you probably thought, you know, I got a lot left. Yes. And life got in the way. Yes. Yeah, it was very difficult. How difficult, how was your transition? How long did it take to come out of that? Um, well, it was very difficult because at 18, when I won the U.S. Open the, six, the second time, I had already been out for five months that season with a bad back. And that's why it was so special to win it after coming back from injury. And then I got the bad back again. And... I think sports medicine has come a long way in that they know how to handle these situations much now. Much better than they much did better then. Much better yeah. than they did then. And when I came back, I came back too quickly, and then I got a shoulder problem, then I got plantar fasciitis. It was one thing after another, and then I was in a car accident in New yep. Jersey that I almost got killed in. I heard that, yeah. So it was very difficult because when you think about an athlete who's been playing one sport for since they were five and years so old with those dreams, Big dreams, and then all of a sudden that's taken away from you, it was very difficult to handle. And it took you how long to come out of that? Like it, you had to take a step and say, okay, you know, that part of my life is over. Now what? Well, it took a while because I kept trying to come back. Right. And, but then I think getting into television was very helpful for me because I was still around tennis. I still love to play tennis two or three times a week, go to the majors, and, uh, and, and really doing commentary for, for those. Um, so, sure, it, it's painful to look back sometimes on all the years that I did miss, but I have to look at it glass half full right. in the career that I did have and reaching number one in the world in so many of my dreams. So no there's doubt. a lot of little girls that, pr that I practice with that didn't get to reach their dreams, so I feel fortunate as well. Well, we uh, enjoyed watching you play. We're glad that you're still so successful. We wish you and your family uh, tremendous continued success, and we'll be watching on the Tennis Channel the next couple weeks. Thank you so much. And good luck to Lavazza. Thank you. Very good. Tracy Austin joining us in studio.